me, Stella, and this is the painting from my last video that I just got stretched onto canvas, and this is how it's looking now. Now, everything that's needed is to actually hang it on the wall. This wall already has a couple of screws in it, but these two screws do not benefit me at all in this case, because they're not in the right location. So I'm measuring out to find out where to hang the painting. And I'm using these stick-on hangers from Ikea so that I don't need to drill any holes. I want to align the painting to the mirror on the left and to the sofa. And that's a little interior tip for you. To always try to align things to whatever already exists, if it feels right. That can give more of a balanced feel to the space. In the end, I like how it looks. I'm not sure if it hangs a bit too low for when I'm leaning towards the wall, but that's something I can think about for another time. Let's get into the painting for the day, which is this one. If you want to check out the previous video for this one, then you can check out this video. I've had it laying around for a while, but I just needed to finish it so I could put my mind to rest. Especially when it's already mounted on canvas. I don't really like to have it just laying around and collecting dust and being a reminder of something I haven't finished. And I know that if I don't finish it now, I might never. I have a new collection in mind that I want to start working on. But I wanted to work on it without feeling like I had a door open, if you know what I mean. I wanted to start working on it without feeling that there was something else that I should be finishing. So for me, it's like a declutter. When it's time to close the chapter, it's nice to close the last door that you might have open to create without anything holding you back. That way I think it's easier to think more clearly to create out of a blank canvas. That way it brings you more headspace to create freely as well without feeling like you have other obligations to take care of in the back of your head. I've been trying to organize some things in my life lately and like most people, I think we all get a bit overwhelmed when it comes to larger projects or projects or tasks that have loads of smaller tasks in them. Personally, I find it easier to take time to actually divide the task into smaller tasks. That usually takes form through to-do lists organized in categories to section off things according to a timeline so I know what needs to be done first and what comes after. That prevents me from starting something that isn't really relevant at the moment. An example of the to-do list is for these videos. In the beginning I was learning how to edit, how the audio worked, how to publish the videos and everything in between and every small task within those tasks. And it seemed quite overwhelming. So I made a detailed to-do list 
so that I wouldn't forget things along the way, which I used for a decent amount of time until everything got so automatic for me that I just didn't need it anymore. But instead of doing the same mistakes or forgetting the same things, I just took the time to make a list, to make things clear, and to create a chronological order so that I wouldn't forget anything. by checking off all the boxes until the tasks become natural. I remember I was doing that in an office job once, and I'm guessing the boss wasn't very familiar with that way of learning, and actually saw it as a bad thing that had a long list of boxes to tick, rather than realizing that it was a way for me to visually see the tasks, and therefore do a more thorough job of not forgetting anything, especially when I was still learning. It also makes something that would otherwise feel so overwhelming feel more attainable. Although there can be hundreds of boxes to take to get to the finish line, but at least you start off with one box. And how satisfying isn't it to take something off, to complete something? Small wins are important, especially to keep yourself motivated. And you can choose to only take off a project when the whole thing is finished. Or you can choose to take off smaller bits of the project until the whole thing is finished. You're doing the same work, but, but at least I feel more accomplished when doing it the other way. When I'm continuously taking and feeling like I'm getting stuff done. I find that often when I procrastinate it's because I come across something that looks like a big obstacle. It's like a big wall in front of you that you might not know how to get past. But when you remove one brick and then another brick at a time, you'll slowly see the path uncover itself. I think everyone can benefit from some structure of seeing something visually, even if it means making a messy mind map or something like that. At least seeing things roughly categorized and in a timeline, rather than a bunch of random tasks floating in the air. I can tell that if I see a large task in front of me without really acknowledging it and dissecting it, then it's super easy to just start procrastinating and start thinking about other stuff that are easier to think about. And I think it's important to be present enough during those times to ask yourself, what is actually stopping me right now? Why does it feel so much harder than expected? Why is this overwhelming? How can I categorize things? What really has first priority? What needs to be done first? And slowly you'll come to conclusions and you'll end up going from looking at a chaotic hoarder space to an organized space that is color-coded and you know exactly what pieces goes where. Sometimes I even find out that it's not even the lack of clarity and organization, but sometimes it's something underlying that needs to be addressed. 
that there is an underlying belief of me not being good enough or there's a limiting belief of whatever I'm trying to do that it's not realistic or attainable and then I have to sit down and actually see where did that come from because I know I was not born with that belief it was given to me and when you dig down and find out where those things actually came from you often realize that it was from some external source outside of yourself that you have the free will to believe in that or to consciously take action to create a new belief system and it's a lot easier to consciously walk away from limiting release when you have put a name on it put a day or a picture in your head of where it came from it's no longer a floating idea in your head but it's something tangible when you can put a voice behind the belief it becomes an opinion and you can choose if you believe in that opinion or not hope this made sense and that you enjoyed. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I really want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.